It says, conspiracy theorist revises prediction after world fails to end. <laughs> On September. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start over. Okay, to the people who read the Most High's Word, and if you you know the Bible and how it's going to end, according to what he says, enjoy enjoy this video. Enjoy yourself. This moment is for you. Whew. All right. That being said, I just want to give you the heads up to get you something to eat or drink during this video. Cause, and don't eat it too fast or drink too fast because you might laugh. I'm just saying. Because I'm, I'm probably going to laugh, and I might make you laugh by me laughing. So here we go. But prepare. Pause the video. Get your drink. Get your, you know, go ahead. Get set up. It's going to be good. All right. So a brother of mine called me recently on the 23rd. He said, hey, you know of anything that's happened today on the 23rd? I'm like, mm, just two earthquakes, at least I think. And he was like, oh, okay, man, I, I. So that wasn't major enough for him because I guess all these people were saying that something huge was going to happen on the 23rd. Yeah, it looked like it looked like something could happen on the 23rd. But so I went back and uh, checked this out, um, and it says conspiracy theorist revises prediction as the world fails to end on September 23rd. <sighs> So I'm going down a little bit. Excuse this picture on the right. I can hardly do anything about it. But it says, Armor, get it over with already. As you may be able to tell, Christian conspiracy theorist David Meads, or Meads, <clears throat> prediction that the world as we know it would come to an end this past Saturday was incorrect. <laughs> Consequently, Med, I'm going to just call him Med, whose qualifications include writing books and, get this, writing, I can't even say it, okay, and get this, writing things on a website, now states, <laughs> he didn't give up, he said, I can't even talk, I gotta, I'm about to laugh. Okay. Now states October fifteenth is <laughs> whew, it's definitely doomsday. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Whew, I would tear my camera on just for this part, but that's okay. Okay, so he changed it up. He said, Okay, I was wrong, I was wrong. Now it's gonna be October the fifteenth. <laughs> Okay, so then we go down. Now, I haven't even read beyond this point. <laughs> oh, by the way, I like this picture over here of this man and his dog knocked out. <laughs> okay, so it says, the actual event of the beginning of the tribulation occurs on October 15th, he says on his site. <sighs> that, oh, let me look that way. That's when the action starts. Hold on and watch. Wait until the middle of October. <sighs> Whew. And I don't believe you'll be disappointed. Yeah. Most likely we'll be disappointed. Oh, man, that's funny. Whew. Okay. And somebody said, no, the world will not end on September 23rd. Okay. And then uh, this part says, the man who believes I'm trying not to laugh. The man who believes there exists an ongoing plot to overthrow President Trump, who is brilliant and he knows everything, previously connected the August 21st solar eclipse to the end of the world, citing the biblical significance <laughs> of the number 33. <sighs> oh, my goodness. And how September 23 was 33 days after the tablet. <laughs> oh, sorry, I couldn't even get that out. I heard something like this before from someone, too. All right. So then it says, the world is not ending, but the world is as we know it. 
it is ending. How, I mean, he said, it says, he told the Washington Post earlier this month, a major part of the world will not be the same the beginning of October. Significantly, oops, special, sorry, specifically, me, I mean, Med said, the book of Revelations prophecies, prophe, prophesies, what was that prophecy? Prophecies, I suppose, would begin to appear Saturday. Oh, boy. All right. So that's, I just wanted to share that because that was funny. I was laughing a bit too much. Whew. Okay, now here are some clues or some scriptures to help you not be deceived by these people who are trying to say the world is going to end this date, that date, and all that. They get you all scared and hyped up and, you know, you tell your friends, you tell everybody because I've been deceived before, before I was into the most high truth. So let me show you what helped me. Go to Matthew. For one, just read the most high's word. Study his word. That'll help you. But two, go to Matthew twenty four thirty six. But of that day and hour, no, no man, no, not the angels in heaven, of heaven, but my father only. So right there, he didn't say prophets knew it. He didn't say anybody on the earth knew it. He didn't say the angels knew it of heaven. He didn't even say his... Him himself knew it. He himself knew it. Not even the Son of God said, I know. And by this, the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not the most high, the Holy Spirit don't even know. Those are the three top rulers of the heavens, according to what I know. So it's only one that know. And if he ain't giving it to nobody down here, they don't know either. So... Don't even be worried about some of that stuff. Now, he do give people some things, but of this particular event and day, I don't think he's going to give that to anybody to know. Why would he give it to his son? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, if his son is that important, why would he give it to his own son before he give it to somebody on the earth? We're just dust and earth. We ain't that important. But I'm just saying, I'm no expert. But that's one you can go by. And let me show you how you can tell who's a prophet or a man of God. Go to 1 Kings, read the whole story of Elijah. I recommend. But if you short on time, we're just going to, you know, stick to a verse for now. I might read around it, but I'm going to summarize it. Elijah just healed a woman's son who he was sojourning with. Her son just died. He just healed him. Verse 24 of 17 says, in 1 Kings, by the way, And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this, the miracle that just happened, the Most High just allowed the, um, the child's soul to come back into him again because of the words of Elijah, because of the prayer of Elijah. So she was saying, By this, I know that you are a man of God. By that, she knew it. Not a lot of people doing miracles like this today. We can't say this about a lot of people. But people claim that there are men of God or people call them men of God. How? They ain't doing miracles like Elijah did. So we need to be careful of who we call a man of God or consider one. Look to the word at the definition of a man of God. Study that and then you will know for sure. Who or what is a man of God, according to the word of God? So anyway, after that it says, and that the word of the Yahweh, that's the ancient Hebrew for, well, ancient Hebrew word for Lord. Let me read this all over again. I'm sorry, I, I get all in my studies. And that the word of the Yahweh in your mouth is truth. So she knew two things by that one miracle. She knew that he was a man of God, and she knew that the words of the Yahweh in his mouth was true. Because some people claim they speak in, by the Most High, and they can deceive people. But she knew that this person who was speaking 
by the Most High was telling the truth. She knew both of those things by that one miracle. So just study on that. And if you see people out there like that today, then you can call them a man of God. But if you don't, I keep that to yourself. All right. So, bam, that's how you can tell who's a man of God slash prophet. And that's how you can tell if these people are lying because nobody knows that particular day or specific day or hour except the father only. You know, I don't. I don't think he's going to give that information out to anybody. <laughs> I'm just saying, it don't look like nobody's that special. So, and if he did give it out, it might not be safe. You know what I'm saying? So, you're going to keep that with him, I suppose. All right, so that was it. I just wanted to let them know, or y'all know, the most highest word on that. 